Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Shaitan al-Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Wa ati Allah, wa ati Rasul, wa ulul amri minkum and always a reminder to myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahat and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence, He took a path and to be nothing, not shaykh, not a this or that, just a servant of Allah if He accepts us, a lover of Sayyidina Muhammad if he accepts us inshaAllah. That reminder always for myself that something that is said may sound so simple but yet is so complex. This understanding of mirrors and mirroring and we see it in all Islamic huruf and art where they take the who and they mirror it, they, they take a kalam and they mirror it to the other like the symmetry of each kalam and that we are made in a perfect mirror, a symmetry that the right reflects to the left and our left reflects to the right and that the highest level of an understanding of this ayna, this mirror is in the kalima which is the first usul. So when people think that they understood the usul, they merely scratch the level of Sharia, there's the tariqa, there's the haqiqa, marifa and azima of every knowledge. At its highest level the ayna that is most important is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And when they write it in Lam Alif is to show it connected but it's reflecting. And our path is based on understanding this mirror and understanding the reality that Allah wants us to know from an ayna, from a mirror and mirroring. Today when we say mirror we think of a glass that has a, a, a chemical upon it and it reflects to you. But in that time there was no glass, it was about polishing metal. It was about taking an iron, a metal and polishing it to the extent that it was so clean and so reflective. And that was the importance that you polish something that had a tendency to become rusted, worn out and dirtied. And when anything is rusted it can reflect nothing. So we polish and polish and polish and polish, if it's rusty it reflects nothing. And they came into our lives and taught us, no polish and polish and polish. This reality of polishing it becomes so shiny that it begins to reflect what it looks at. So the image in the mirror is reflecting back to me. So when I take myself to the reality and I direct myself to Allah because that which you focus on in life is actually focusing on you because you directed your attention and your heart. So they come in our lives that be careful. If you direct your heart and your attention on dunya, dunya will definitely focus back to you and pull you. That's why Allah shows in all these movies because the people, 99% of the people are not going to masjid. You think Allah created them out of love and He left them to burn? Or He's inspiring in different mediums that call my creation back to their senses. And in these mediums they, they show by these examples, they show all these realities. 
that which you focus on is focusing on you. When you focus on evilness and wickedness and, and death and destruction, death begins to look back at you because you got its attention. Focus too much on fire and brimstone and devils and demons and, and punishment and jahannam. You focus on jahannam, you focus on jahannam, jahannam now got your attention too. Jahannam start to look back at you and reflect and you become in your nature very fiery, very angry because Jahannam is moving through you and talking through you and every evilness and wickedness that we focus on will begin to reflect through you, your hearing, your eyes, your speech. So they came into our lives and said, be careful, this being that you are is very powerful. You yet don't know and understand its power. Focus on that which is eternal and that which is beatific. And they taught us that if you polish your metal, polish your metal, you become so transparent and so clean that you'll reflect out a reality. So as they begin to focus on Allah focus on the love of Allah Focus on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then that begins to focus on them. The cleaner you are, the more zikr you're doing, the more washing you're doing, the, the less we're giving to our bad desires and bad characteristics, that reality can reflect back. It's not hitting rusted metal, it's hitting something shiny. When Allah's looking at His servant with this light, it's shining and hitting that metal and as a reflect it's shining back and Allah dressing it and redressing it and redressing it. It's not going into a void where it hits and just goes into nothingness, it reflected. When they focus on Sayyidina Muhammad then Prophet nazar upon them, that's why Prophet gave all of these understandings and secrets that, make one salawat upon me, I mean take one glance into the mirror at me and I give you ten eternal glances back to you. And when Prophet is glancing back to your soul and to your wujud, to your entire being, what dresses of Holy Qur'an, innahu dhikrun, Surat Yaseen is the heart of Qur'an and Allah giving all the secrets of Qur'an from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah teaching, inna huwa dhikrun wa Qur'anil mubin. He is the dhikr of all the samawati wal ard and he's my walking Qur'an. When he وسلم, is going to praise you, who are you? A nobody. And this is his extreme rahmah. And Allah amazed Khulqul Azeem that he's going to begin to praise back on you ten times. This ayna begin to dress you. So imagine then this formula of this reality that direct yourself to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to make your salawats and clean, clean, clean until the ayna becomes so purified. Because just a little bit of purity, just a little bit of effort on your behalf. That's why Allah just said, make one step towards me and 99 steps I'm coming towards you. Means your zikr and your actions, they're not going to fix you. Don't keep texting, do I do the 23, then I do the 24, then I look down and then I go up. And then I move to the right, did I move to the left? I don't know what they call it, a personality? Where you, 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 you're so meticulous but you lost the understanding. This is not about you doing anything to lift yourself anywhere. You really think you can lift yourself off the ground and into the heavens? You're merely supposed to take one step. Just with the intention, Ya Rabbi, I'm intending to clean myself, I'm intending to do my zikr, I'm intending to find some way to be of service. I am an abdul ajeez, daif, miskeen, zalim, 
I'm an oppressor to myself, I'm poor, I'm yatim, I'm nothing. No way can I lift myself, I'm making one step. Means I begin just to polish with these actions, not thinking I'm going to really reach to the heavens and fly with my zikr and should I do it like this, should I breathe through this, should I breathe through out, breathe out. The questions you're asking is exposing which is good, it exposes your misunderstanding in your mind. But this is encouraged to ask because it has to come out the understanding. This path is a path of humility that you give me the awrads and the zikrs the shaykhs have given and in no way am I thinking I'm getting anywhere. I'm going to do it out of love and muhabbat and out of this love and muhabbat I'm going to follow. And when I begin to do that, that one step is coming, means you clean a little bit, let the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad begin to hit your mirror. That light when it hits the mirror begins to burn everything. We said before now they're releasing these videos of these lasers, they go through extreme metal and they don't burn the metal, they take the rust off. Like that and it's like a fire coming out of it and it returns it to brand new. See if that can do it from Toshiba, imagine the soul and the nazar of Prophet and that's why we say, Unzur halana, said, Ya Rasulullah gaze upon us. No mind people they think it's a physical eye. His eye more powerful than the strongest sun of all these universes. And if anyone understands what light does, just study the sun in our own galaxy. What type of power and force that sun has? That sun has the spectrum of light that nourishes you, dresses you, blesses you, make you to see, eat and drink on this earth. If you approach a little bit too much it'll burn you and annihilate you into beyond ashes and dust. If you got that close, if you got just a little bit closer it'll kill you by radiation. All the spectrums of light that coming from the sun is radioactive. Most of it has to be filtered from the earth, why? So Allah keep it, too much of that, that reality hit the earth, everybody will be fried on this earth has many different spectrums and realities. We only take a, a small channel from the entire spectrum of light that coming from the sun. That sun is imitated reality of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad You can't say Allah, Astaghfirullah, there's nothing like Allah That would be a ridiculous understanding. Allah beyond the comprehension of this creation, that light, how powerful it is that it can dress, means then that nazar, that mirror, that reality of mirroring is I just do what they've asked of me to the best of my ability. Don't worry about being meticulous because it's not you going to be lifting anywhere. You do it so that you can begin to crack some of the dirtiness off and this light of Prophet begin to shine through and burn through every type of rusty bad character. Muhi al qulub mahniyu dhunub. Muhi al qulub mahniyu dhunub. The same light that comes to revive the soul is the same light that burn every sin and every bad action. That reality of mirroring. That at the highest level what is La ilaha illallah because these are two mirrors. So in our life you first come to what door? When Allah inspire you give up all the gods that you worship and that you serve and everybody serves many gods. They smoke that's the god of smoke because they can't give it up. The drink, that's the god of intoxication. Anything that holds a grip on you is your Rabb. And Allah says, deny all those Rabb and come to Rabbi Al-A'la, Most High. And inspired in all our hearts, come to La ilaha illallah. Everything but the oneness of Allah will nothing Ya Rabbi. 
of all these vices and all these desires that are like chains onto my feet. When they grab my feet they grab my hands and when they grab my feet and my hands the chains push me into the earth and all the bad desires and then shaitan throws one big lock and you may have a dream where shaitan is holding you by the neck and goes from home to home throwing chains on people's necks and then walking with them. And shaitan has grabbed you. When Allah inspires us to come we begin to direct ourselves to the mirror of La ilaha illallah. And when you look and when you're sincere and you come with love Allah begin to reflect the first reality is that look into the mirror and what is it that you see? Because anytime you <laughs> look into the mirror you're not seeing the mirror. So I don't know if anyone understood the concept of a mirror. When you look in the mirror you're not seeing the mirror, you're not seeing Allah. You see what Allah is reflecting to you. And who does everyone find when they come towards Allah's highest religion? They look in the mirror and they found Muhammadun Rasulullah. Everyone who accepted Islam, born to Islam, came to the highest deen which is the deen of Islam, they looked into the mirror of La ilaha illallah and Allah showed them, go to Muhammadun Rasulullah So they looked into this mirror, this is the real tawheed at the highest level of perfection for us to reach. They looked into La ilaha illallah and they look with all their sincerity, I need you my Lord, I need you my Lord, I love you, I love you my Lord. What other people are teaching I'm not finding it, many came from religion and say, I heard what they preach and I didn't accept it. I know the good oneness of God and I, I want to serve the oneness of God. And how they came to Islam by saying, what? Not La illallah but they had to say, La illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Why? Because the mirror is pointing, they're looking. And Allah reflecting, go to Muhammadun Rasulullah So this mirror in our life is the most important understanding. If you understood that you'll understand our whole way of marifah is this reality of the mirror. It's not something simple and, and easy as, how can I teach my kids? You come to La ilaha illallah, you're looking with all sincerity. And what Allah shows you in that reflection, go to Muhammadun Rasulullah He what? Contains my reality. I'm dressing him from that reality. Not on earth and not on heaven but I'm in the heart of my believer which is that lamb. The lamb alif is the secret of that. You're coming towards the alif and the izzah of Allah the oneness of Allah and Allah is reflecting you to the reflection, say, my might and majesty upon this reality, direct yourself to Muhammadun Rasulullah They enter now into the oceans of tawheed and kalimat al tayyib where they've been cleaned by this kalima and its reality. And Nabi Musa wanted this reality, I don't want what I've been given from a lesser degree, I want from the secret of this reality that is above all of the haqqaiqs because it goes into the greatness and the secret of Allah Allah was a hidden treasure, hidden in this mirror wanting to be known, it's hidden in the mirror. You'll never be able to reach on the veil of La ilallah. Anyone and they have no mind thinking they're going to Allah they're going only to the mirror. And Allah give for His sincere servants, do you realize you have a hat and a limit? O oh my creation be humble. Do you really think you're going beyond this mirror? And then you become one with Allah there's a hat, a limit, they stopped at the limit when they were sincere Allah began to shine to them 
Muhammadun Rasulullah. This is the treasure I wanted you to find. My names dress this treasure, my realities dress this treasure. If you want to see me, look at him. And Sayyidina Muhammad told his companions, if you've seen me, you've seen this reflection of Allah Seen me, seen me with your heart and with your good character, you would have seen La ilaha illallah reflecting. So then only Allah found and then they were guided. Now go towards Muhammadun Rasulullah they began to look into the mirror of Muhammadun Rasulullah and as a result Prophet is looking back and begin to dress them, dress them, dress them, dress them. And what is he dressing them with? La ilaha illallah. Do you understand? Wherever you're looking is dressing you with the reality. Prophet dress, when you're dressing and dressing and dressing, Prophet is dressing you with La ilallah. When you move only towards La ilallah, you'll get an understanding of only Muhammadun Rasulullah. So your first step on the journey of sincerity you go, Allah begin to teach you about the greatness of Muhammadun Rasulullah. Right? Then he began to tell you, in Allahi wa malaikatahu yusalloon ala Nabi This is in Lahi lillallah. So when only Allah are facing this ocean of Lahi lillah from direct Lahi lillallah, Allah teaching them about Muhammadun Rasulullah Teaching them the zikrs and the realities of re- reflecting out into that ayna of Muhammadun Rasulullah all its beauty, all its dress, all its glorifications. And then this Lahilillah makes the zikr of, in Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalloon ala nabi. Lahilillah makes the zikrs of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then Allah opened for them, go deeper, direct yourself now into the line of Muhammadun Rasulullah when they directed themselves into the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah then it began to reflect all the realities of La ilaha but at the level of the heart of Muhammad because they fell in love. The ones who didn't reach between these mirrors they don't have the love, they just think they love Allah if Allah accepts your sincerity, He brings you into the mirror to love that which He loves, that which He's reflecting to is what He loves. He brings you into their love story between the two rivers. When you love, He sends you to all the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why then they begin to talk about all the haqqaiqs and the haqqaiq of Muhammadiyah. Haqiqatan Muhammadiyah is the highest levels of teachings. When Allah direct them to Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad begin to from the depth of the Muhammadan heart begin to teach about those realities of La ilallah. That the real zikr of Allah must be from the tongue and the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah So they go deep into the reality in the love of Prophet from the heart of Prophet is been teaching now the reflection of La ilallah. That's why when you go to Mecca it's actually the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad If you don't understand the ayna the whole journey is confusing for Zahiri people. They didn't get it. It's okay, they die without getting it because Allah says, you blind in dunya, you'll be raised blind in akhirah. If they got it and they were granted to be with these teachers of haqqaiq, they would have taught them that when you went to Mecca, Mecca is an active state. In the binary code it's the active state and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad must be there. Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, 
Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhada wa Salihin. And Allah with them all their souls are there, it's active state and busy. And they found it to be busy and, and, and agitated and, and so much happening there. This is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It reflected when they came with sincerity and sincerity to the house of Allah for his mukhlas and his sincere servants. He says, if you want to really find me, go down to Medina because the reflection of the mirror hit them. They went, the busy tawaf and say, Ya Rabbi, ya, this, this, ya, this is great. But when they stepped into Medina, they stepped into Allah's presence. Why? Because this is the state where Prophet is not busy. Prophet is in a state of fana, alone with his Lord. And when Prophet is described from all the hadith, the qalb al mu'min baytullah, that when the mu'min is tranquil and in complete submission to Allah busy with nothing but the Divinely Presence, who do you find in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad in Medina to Munawwara is Allah's Divinely Light. And they find peace and serenity in Medina, they find tranquility and Izzatullah in, in Medina to Munawwara because the reflection. They entered into Muhammad Rasulullah and it's reflecting all the realities of La ilaha in Medina. In Medina the experiences are something unimaginable. In Mecca the experiences are unimaginable but of a different reality. And this is the concept of Aynan mirroring. So everything in our light and in our life is about this. And that's why Prophet described, Minhu wa minhum, that these personalities from my family, from my companions, from awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard, their life was to rid themselves of themselves. Those whom able to rid themselves and live a life of zikr and praisings and salawats and good actions and you can see it by the character of what those people are doing. If they're busy in the glorification of Allah and the praising of Sayyidina Muhammad and all their actions are Muhammadiyoon and all their love and their consciousness is about this Muhammadan reality, it's one of those whom when they're cleaning and doing, cleaning and doing prophetic light of Sayyidina Muhammad begin to shine through them. And not only Prophet is teaching that they are from me but when they rid themselves of themselves, I will be through them. You'll see me in them, you'll feel me in them, you'll eat with me through them, you'll be with me through them. Because he took his iron and he polished it and he understood in his path he's nothing. And he's no one. And the rules of zuhud were not to attract attention to yourself. You were supposed to be a moon that was nothing. When you adorn yourself like a peacock and use outrageous colors and outrageous looks, this is something else, it's a different reality that you are going after. This reality of the moon and the qamar was be nothing, be absolutely nothing. So that the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad will reflect through you. And if that reflection is coming through all your teachings would be of Muhammadiyoon. All your focus would be of the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And where is Sayyidina Muhammad throughout Holy Qur'an? It's not about me and you. What Allah has ordered for me and you, it's what Allah gave of realities to Sayyidina Muhammad We negated ourselves at the door when we entered in. This iron in your body is your blood. You say, okay now how am I going to get this, Shaykh? Very easy. The iron in you that reflecting and needing polishing is what? Your hemoglobin. 
What makes you to be red? Red blood is the iron inside the body and inside. Allah gave us iron within our body. <coughs> this iron within the body has to be polished. When the iron is polished and clean and continuous zikr, watching and abstaining from food and drink, this iron becomes polished, this iron becomes strong, this hat. It's so important that Allah named a surah after it, I think it's Surah 57. That it's an element that not from earth, it's an element from the heavens, from the universes. It's iron is not found on earth, it's not made on earth, it comes to earth, tanzila, it comes from the heavens onto earth, from the space and the stars comes out. That iron is found within insan, if it's purified this whole talk of the ayna is my blood. If I clean it, wash it, watch over how I eat and drink with it, all my characteristics, this iron in my blood will be polished. And the importance of zikr is so important for anyone who understanding wellness and spiritual wellness and physical wellness. Your sickness is related to your iron. When you polish it, you breathe the breath and all the Naqshbandi shaykhs described in the Naqshbandi book that this way is based on the breath. This is something not even talked about anymore. The whole of tariqah was based on the breath. How to breathe, be conscious of your breath, watch what's coming in to you as an energy. This breath comes in, a nafas al rahmah, it comes in to the believer. This breath, it dresses the energy in the lungs where the blood is coming. The blood is coming off of the lungs dressed from this breath. This blood from the lungs, it moves into the heart. When this blood is being clean, this blood is being washed and done with zikr, enters to the heart. The heart that makes zikr is a heart that's lit with energy. Zikrullahi tasma'ina qulu. And zakirin, those whom they live their life for zikr, they're, they're clean and purified by zikr. They're not the people who don't make zikr. There's not one wali who does not make zikr. Because then it's a dirty hearted person, it's impossible, it's a hundred percent they make zikr if they're only Allah. They can be an outward ulama and they don't do any zikr and their knowledge is of useless. But the people of realities their heart is alive and a factory for Allah because now we're going to understand. Their heart is continuous zikr of Allah continuous salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad because that is the power of their factory. Their factory for their entire being, headquarters is the heart. So imagine then the qudra with their zikrs coming, the light with their zikrs coming. Their hearts are lit like power, powerhouse like a sun. It produces so much light people can feel it throughout the earth. There's not a place on this earth if you don't focus on them their light will hit you. And beyond this earth because their connection is not from here, their connection goes beyond all the planets, space and time into the heavens at a speed of thought. Not Jupiter, Prophet is not on Pluto. The reality of Prophet is beyond the seven heavens into paradise. And at the speed of thought their soul is connected and receiving its lights and its tajallis. With what power is that? Means that then these lights that are coming, these energies that are coming, their hearts are like a power source, a factory. As soon as their blood enters into that factory, it's stamped, it's dressed, its sins are washed away, muhi al qulub mahiya dhunub. The light that emanating into their heart immediately burns away any type of rust on that one cell, dresses it 
and then moves it to the 11 essential organs of the body. There's not a person that can reach anywhere close to these realities if their heart is not doing zikrullah. If they're not doing awrads and zikrs and practices, if we want to understand the physiology of why you're doing zikr, it's not your entertainment purposes. These are energies that come to the heart, these are the power source that come to the heart and it's what's necessary to clean this one piece of iron so that it be dressed by zikrullah, blessed by zikrullah which is the zikr and salawat on Prophet too, it's all combined. That dressed and blessed iron will go throughout the body, illuminate every, every cell and vein and organ of the body will be illuminated by that light. As a result they're a organic factory. What they produce, produces tremendous benefit for humanity and they put out virtually no waste. Nothing that comes from them is of any contaminants to human beings. So it's what you call a clean factory now. That's why then when you watch on television, now what's the reverse? There are factories on this earth that they merely turn on, they're killing all their neighborhood. You've seen the smoke that comes from countries where they don't have regulations. They turn the factory on to make two pieces of toilet paper. 10,000 homes are being contaminated by the dood and the smoke that come in. Then they examined these factories and they said that, look at the waste, they use toxic acids in their processes, the waste from the bowel of a factory is killing their neighborhoods, goes into their water supply, kills and destroys everything. Allah just say, you know more dangerous than this is one human being with a bad heart. And that's what we should have sown when Allah just says, I, I show you my example on the horizon and within yourself. On the horizon look to a bad factory, for whatever garbage it thinks it's producing, it's killing 10,000 homes with its breath and from its bowels poisoning and toxicating all the water supply for 10,000 homes and they all have uh, radiation, they have all sorts of uh, contamination, poor people are dying around these factories. And Allah just say, imagine then one insan whose heart is more toxic than that factory, doesn't make zikr, it's filled with qadab and anger. Everything that comes from its mouth is a poison. Everything that comes from its wujud and from its being is poisonous and toxic to everything. It's angry and toxic. And Allah just says, you have the owner. The factory in the end will be closed down, burn whatever Allah wants to do with the volcano and cover it. But how can you go to your Lord as a toxic factory? That all that came from your mouth was toxic waste and all that came from the, the bowels and the, the being of your being was just toxic and killing everyone. So means zikr and the reality of this ayna has immense way of reality. The heart has to be powered, has to be energized, the iron has to be pure and purified, enters into the heart, become a clean factory. What it produces all of humanity will eat from it, it's reality. It's not only clean for itself, that it's, it's not contaminating and harming anything around it but the end result of what it produces will be eternal. People will eat from its fruits for generations. And these are the futuhat of awliyaullah, their stamp and footprint on this earth was small, they harmed no one. But they benefited millions of people from their knowledges and from the realities that they spread. That to today we're still eating and drinking from those fruits. Supporting that is not something small, supporting that is something that ends and, and goes to the soul and generations. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding. When we say tafakkur and meditation it's not something small. This is the end level of all spiritual journeys. Tafakkur is not the beginning step but they're teaching it in reverse in this dunya and this material world. It was meant to be the final step of perfection. So it means these ijazahs to teach tafakkur and contemplation is not entry level. 
These were the, the final and the finishing courses for all spirituality. We pray that Allah give us an understanding and in these holy nights of Laylatul Qadr inshaAllah tomorrow night we describe more in the Qadr nights. This whole ayna gives you more understanding what is Laylatul Qadr and where are you standing and sitting to receive it inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siddat Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.